Now, if you know anything about camera design, you know the biggest challenge is vertical height. Making something thinner is the worst thing you can do to a camera team. So we asked them to go ahead and try to create a camera to fit in the new th thinner, lighter iPhone 5 and deliver the kind of performance we had of the I with the iPhone 4S camera that is heralded as perhaps the best camera in the entire market. And they've done that. They have built in an 8 megapixel sensor, 3264 by 2448, backside illuminated for great low light performance, hybrid IR filter, five element lens, and a fast f2.4 aperture. All the things you loved about the iPhone 4S, now in a camera design, it's 25% smaller. That was a huge undertaking. But they didn't stop there. They've enhanced this camera even further. A few of the examples of what it has now is a new dynamic low light mode. So when you're in low light situations, the ISP senses that and is able to combine multiple pixels together to give you up to two f-stops greater performance in those scenarios. And you really see the difference in your low light pictures. And this optical system has been amazing with this five element lens. One of the best ways to get a better, sharper image through an optical system is more advanced alignment of those lenses for focusing. And the team now is measuring down to the micron level to create better aligned lenses. And you really see a difference in the quality of the image. And for the first time, we cap off this optical system with a sapphire crystal lens cover. You know, sapphire is renowned for being hard and crystal clear. And it helps protect your lens and make your images clearer and sharper. On top of this camera system, we have a new ISP, image signal processor from Apple built into the A6 chip. And it does some tremendous things to help improve your photography. It does spatial noise reduction. We want to remove the noisy particles, especially in low light images. So by looking at surrounding pixels, we can determine where the noise is and help remove that. We also have an Apple technology called a smart filter that looks at the image before the ISP does its noise reduction and can figure out where there's areas that should be uniform color, like a blue sky, and other areas where they're texture, and you shouldn't be doing noise reduction on that. And it's really powerful to deliver amazing low light performance. We also have faster photo capture. And the iPhone 4S was already really fast. This is now 40% faster. But it all adds up to simply using it and seeing what kind of pictures you can get. So we've taken the iPhone 5. We've taken pictures with it. And these are from the camera, untouched. And see what you think. The ocean just looks bluer on the iPhone 5. Kids look happier. <laughs> they really do. And the world is just a more beautiful place when you take pictures with the iPhone 5. Now, this is incredible. This is a macro photo, beautiful bokeh or blurred background, as you would want from a great camera system. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Look at that bee. You can see the veins on the wings of the bee. I don't know if you've ever tried to do that in a photo. It's not easy. This camera is tremendous. And with iOS 6 and iCloud, you now have a new feature called shared photo streams, where you can take your photos and automatically share them with your friends and family where they can like them and comment on them. But perhaps the most amazing feature of the new camera in iPhone 5 is called Panorama. And this is incredible. With typical legendary Apple ease of use, you just tap and say, I want to take a panorama photo. You hold your phone vertical to get the maximum area, and then you just sweep your scene. And the software tells you what pace to sweep it out to get the perfect image. And what it does is astounding. You get remarkably beautiful photographs, incredible panoramas. This image is 28 megapixels in size, taken right on your iPhone 5 camera. And what the software does is um, unbelievable. Behind the scenes, in real time, while you're panning, it is taking slices of photos, finding the edges, stitching them together, creating seamless transitions between those photos for one beautiful panorama. It's even able to turn, determine a nonlinear path through it if you're not perfectly stable and align it, and remove some of the echo artifacts you get if people or objects are moving while you're trying to get that pan. It is truly breakthrough software for panorama photos. Let me zoom in a little more and show you the quality of this image. It's simply stunning the detail. Now, we use this one because it's a tough one. So you can see the exposure changes from one end to the other as it goes from dark to light. There's even people standing there in the corner that were tougher to see when we pulled out to such a large photo. 
I have one other example just to show you how much fun you can have with the panorama feature. This is one panorama photo. This looks like there's two people in it. Those are not twins. That's the same person. I'll leave it to fans of the iPhone to figure out how to do pictures like this and have a blast taking fun panorama photos. Well, the camera is amazing for taking pictures. It's also a lot better for video as well. We still take 1080p HD video. We've improved the video stabilization with the new ISP and the A6 chip. We have face detection for up to 10 faces while you're shooting the video. And of course, you can take photos while you're recording video. And the camera on the front has been updated as well. The FaceTime camera is now a FaceTime HD camera, 720p, backside illuminated for great low light performance, does face detection, and you can do FaceTime over cellular networks as well. So that's the new camera, EyeSight and FaceTime cameras built into iPhone 5.